Okay, I'm going to fly through these slides because uh, we have a, an amazing demo from Anapama coming up, and I don't want to take away too much time from it. This is the user interface working group. We meet on the third Wednesday of the month at noon Eastern time. The user interface working group has three goals. The first one is to just understand the UI elements of I2B2, as well as all the customizations that different institutions do and plugins that they create. And we saw some of that yesterday. Also learning about how other programs have um, addressed similar types of query and analysis problems that I2B2 has and learning from that. And then third, supporting ongoing efforts to improve and extend the UI. And as I'll mention, there's been um, revisions of both the Shrine UI and the I2P2 UI, and this working group has had a lot of feedback on that. Um, for goal number one, we've looked at lots of different interfaces over the last few years, gone into a lot of deep dives with I2B2, as well as other tools. There's a program called Picture that um, derived out of I2B2. It uses a very simple, just plain Google-like interface. Um, and there's benefits and weaknesses of that. Uh, there's a program, LEAF, that started with I2B2 and tried to improve a lot of the data elements and make it a lot more usable. Um, there's a lot of kind of natural language in there uh, that helps users figure out what things are. And there was a program, Glowing Bear, which instead of the horizontal query builder has a more vertical design, which um, for kind of new use of I2B2 is more in, seems to be more intuitive for them. We've taken deep dives into lots of topics, in particular ontology, and that's made its way into even the older I2B2 web client, and now it's a big part of the new web client. Uh, we looked at use, I, ontology usability issues, uh, which um, you know, Michelle and others we've chatted about. Uh, we looked at the query builder and different ways of organizing it, modifiers, temporal queries, this ontology search, what it used to look like and what it looks like now. Um, one of the topics I'd like to focus on this year are modifiers. In the new web client, we're kind of just replicating how it worked in the old web client. And it's, uh, it's difficult for people to, or to new users to know how to do this. And even for us experienced people, it could be complicated to build out modifier queries. And uh, we have some great ideas that we talked about this past year. And I'd like to get into more depth about how to actually implement this. As I mentioned, we had a, we developed a few years ago a new user interface for Shrine, for Harvard Catalyst, and others, and then the new web client that Anapon will be showing today. Uh, for future working group topics, uh, I mentioned modifiers, temporal queries. Nick Brown created a plugin uh, a couple years ago for family relationships. So, how would you link a mother and a child if you're trying to understand um, uh, genetic relationships there? Uh, and queries for specimens or other entity types, and how would we visualize that? Viewing results, there's, we talked a lot about new kinds of breakdowns and what's the best way of doing that. Uh, looking at different ways of going between a local query, uh, an I2B2 and a shrine query where you're visiting, looking at the results of many institutions. You know, there are different ways of transitioning between them and workflows to request patient level data. There's a number of things we can do in the UI related to data quality and data insights. So information about ontology items. Each item in that ontology has all sorts of data about when did it start getting used at your institution, what are the counts by year, or is this an accurate, is there a phenotype associated with it and others. And we could provide that information in the ontology, but if there's no way of displaying it in the UI, how would users get to it? Um, there's federated network data quality metrics such as Jeff Glenn's dashboard that he's developed for an act. And then for the computational phenotypes and loyalty cohorts. In my presentation yesterday, I was showing lots of graphs that illustrate the uh, various data metrics about the computational phenotypes, the recall, the precision, um, how it's changed over time to see changes in accuracy. And all these can be bubbled up as visualizations that we put into the UI. And in previous symposiums has been talked about general functionality, just like single sign-on between I2B2 and Shrine and localization using different languages, the additional topics. We don't have a separate session here on the Committee on Technology, but it's another working group that um, I lead where we talked about ontology, ETL, AI, user interface, they're topics where they cross all these different working groups. And this Committee on Technology is a place where we can all get together and address these things. So computational phenotypes is probably one of them, definitely modifiers, ontology, 
Um, these are things that you just, in an individual working group, can't solve them on their own. There's sometimes you need different uh, components of I2B2 to work together. So I will end there. We can, in our next user interface working group, we may go into that a little bit more and discussing what topics we want to review. But I want to introduce Anna Palmer now, who's been working with uh, Nick Benick and uh, uh, Martini over at Harvard Catalyst on a wonderful new user interface. We're going to see a quick demo of it here. And then a little bit later, Nick will um, go into some detail about building plugins and extensions to the UI. Thank you.